All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, we are going to check out how to pose the quarterback and back views to match the ones that we have in our ref over here. So we had already in the previous videos positioned our different keyframes on the timeline. So we have here at frame 40, we'll have the quarterback view and at frame 50, we'll have the back view. So um, the transition between the side and quarterback is usually one of the most difficult ones because this is where we end up having to deal with items disappearing, popping to the back, um, and uh, various things such as this. So um, let's get started right away. We're gonna start on the face just so we can have uh, the hardest part of the rotation out of the way uh, and then we can move on to the body. So let's go ahead and zoom in over here. Don't forget if you want to have a clearer view of what's going on, you can always boost up the transparency over here to, um, to see the, the, um, the reference as a more faded object. So we have all the different elements of the face here. We had the, uh, the piece of the muzzle that we had created for uh, specifically the side view. Um, this one is not cut by anything, so I won't be able to offset it just, uh, just like that to the side and have it be invert cut by anything. Um, so what we can actually do, instead of moving the entire face for this one, I'm probably going to take the eyes master or um, even the one controlling uh, both eyes at the same time, that would work uh, pretty nicely. Um, I could have the one controlling the eyebrows as well because the one after that is the entire face. So using B and Shift B, of course, you can go ahead and go up and down this hierarchy, see which one would be best to manipulate. And the end of the head pretty much happens at the same place over here on the side. So I may want to nudge those over until we no longer see them. So what's gonna happen is uh, when I transition, basically this eye will just shift over to the side as such. Now, when my character goes over to the side, I don't wanna nudge it too far away because then it will move much faster from this position into the next. Now, um, as we can see right now, it's really just offsetting without much more happening to it. So I may decide to do something a little bit different. Perhaps I will want to uh, scale down the eye in a certain place. So for the quarterback, it may be a nice idea to have some sort of a breakdown in the middle of those two poses. We'll see that in a little bit as we, um, we start creating our view here just how much we can do to uh, make it a little bit better. So looking at the hair, the hair should be pretty simple. We're just gonna take the peg that controls all three of them, reposition it over to the side, and we want to nudge it back a little because now it's going to the back of the head. So we'll bring that over there, readjust slightly if need be, just to give us a nice little change and not have it look like it's just offsetting. And of course we have the ear over on this side. Uh, the, ear is going, the ear is going to be a tricky one. Um, we may want to just swap it over like this and bring it over to the other side if we want it to just transition smoothly from one side to the other. But of course we'll have to make this, uh, this piece over here transition nicely uh, within the, um, the movement. So uh, instead of rotating it, you might decide to flip it as well. This could be another idea to, uh, to be able to have a nice smooth transition, but you will have to break down the movement in the middle. So uh, it's really up to you which way you decide to do it for that particular matter. Um, for me right now, I'll just take this entire piece here. Oops, I'm gonna just make sure that 
I see all of my drawings in there if I hadn't extended the exposure properly. And I'm going to take this entire ear, rotate it, and nudge it over to the side to position it about where it should be. So pivot point might be our uh, main objective to keep it kind of centered in the ear. So something like this would work nicely, I find. Uh, we'll be able to readjust those lines a little bit later on depending on uh, which one is supposed to kind of take place. So right now it is just offsetting to the side. This part over here will reduce in size and this one will pretty much cover up the entire ear as we go. Now um, for the rest of the positioning of the ear, I'm going to make sure that this reduces in size, but as we mentioned before, when we decrease the size of a deformer, sometimes it is going to uh, not appear so nicely uh, because it kind of explodes because of the regions of influences uh, start overlapping with each other and it doesn't look so nice. So I may want to use the peg for this one, or I could do the same thing as for this ear and create another area that kind of cuts away uh, with a cutter region. Uh, let's try it out with the peg. Of course, that's the simpler solution. If I want to thin it out quite a bit and have that positioned here, it is going to be behind the rest of the ear so we don't need to worry too much about how it's going to look now. The main idea is that we want it to transition nicely from one pose to the other. So as we go into frame 40, we may want to position this one, which is the one that is going to cover up the entire ear uh, nicely. So you can get this one out of the way. You can even uh, either create a new drawing or flip it so we'll have to readjust this one. And you may want to flip that over and reposition it. We'll have to readjust this one as we do the interpolation, but that's all fine. Now for this line over here, we may want to activate our deformer, see where that cutter area is going to be. So that's why it's important sometimes to have the cutter area included within the deformation range because right now if I were to just take the, uh, the peg of this and move it to the side, at some point I reach the area where my cutter is affecting the rest of the piece. So I may want to just make sure that I keep that area as large as possible and I'm going to recreate pretty much the shape of the ear. And this piece that we have over on this side, this is the one that is the actual ear. So now if we want the line to remain, we can bring that over, make sure that we follow the line as closely as possible. And as I make that a little bit bigger, it doesn't matter. It's the line with the cutter controlling where this is going to fall. So I want to make sure that we follow as closely as possible what we have in here and try to follow that curve just like so. Now the pink part of the ear is still kind of sticking out. We can try nudging it in for now and see how that's going to look in the interpolation, we want to make sure that our pose is looking nice without moving anything around too much to compromise the rest of the movement. So right now, looking at this, I'm going to turn off my ref because I've already pretty much positioned my ear in the proper way over on this side. And I got something like this happening. So the back part of the ear actually doesn't move, uh, doesn't move in a bad way. Um, this one could use a bit more work, of course. 
Uh, so at this point, it might be a good idea to have a transition pose in the center. We would want this piece to uh, pretty much almost disappear. We want it to reduce in size greatly until it is uh, overlapped with this one. So I already have animation over on all of these frames. Let's go over and create a breakdown position for the ear. So we'll find the ear master, set a keyframe down in the center to really have that middle position uh, that is going to allow us to really uh, make the best of this movement right here. So this part of the ear is looking pretty nice. I don't want to change it too much. Um, over here I may want to uh, do my adjustment pose, so I'm going to reduce the size of the pink inside of the ear. I may want to bring this up a little. And at this point, I think I'll want to reduce this very greatly. So I can change the size over here. And perhaps bring the pink of the eye in a little bit more. have a smoother transition. Now if there's still a few things wrong with these different pieces, sometimes it can be a good idea to uh, to really have one frame after where we decide, okay, well at this particular point we want the ear to stop appearing, so maybe I would want to thin this out even more to make it look like it's going to disappear completely and in the frame after we may want to just bring that directly to the back to transition out this particular piece here. Now I want to fix the top part of the ear as well. It was transitioning from 1 to minus 1 in the x value so I'm going to make sure that inside of this I have one value here and that we transition into this as smoothly as possible and over on this side I'll have the minus one where we transition into the next side of the ear. So I'm pretty happy with this result for the ear. You want to try to make it consistent with how the ear, uh, the point of the ear falls down over here. Uh, a good idea is usually I just try to bring it to the bottom of the camera and try to make sure that there's not too much, um, too much transitioning going on over here. Otherwise we can always just nudge it down very slightly in that breakdown position that we did. We'll just bring this line down a little bit and already the transition appears much more smoother. So if we wanted to not lose any of those values we could bake those right away. Uh, it's not going to bake onto all of the, the other elements that we have inside of the scene so I'll just go ahead and create it for this one making sure that we keep this movement over here and we can just get, keep going with the rest of the head. So uh, let's keep going in the next video where we figure out the rest of the head and then we can do the body.